Turkey is spatchcocked, then slathered in a special red pepper and feta marinade before cooking and serving with lemon potatoes. Hi everyone, welcome back to Craving Food Adventures. I'm Karen Ahmed. Today we're going to be making a Greek style turkey for Thanksgiving. This turkey is small, as we all know, this is the season when everybody is practicing social distancing, and so I found myself the smallest turkey as well as I bought a utility turkey which means it could have some damaged skin or a missing wing but that's okay it's going to be delicious after I'm done with it I'm going to be slathering this with a delicious red pepper and feta sauce and I'm going to serve it with Greek lemon potatoes before I go any further with this recipe do make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure to ring that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video now let's get cooking Since this Thanksgiving is going to be a quiet one, I opted for the smallest no-frill turkey. This baby is about 8 pounds and it's classified as a utility turkey, which means that it could have torn skin and missing a wing or so. This turkey has been defrosting in my fridge for about 2 days and it's now completely thawed out. I'm going to get all of the bits out of the cavity before giving it a good rinse and then I'm going to sit this cavity down. so it can drain properly. If you've watched some of my early turkey videos, you know that I like to brine the bird. This makes the bird absolutely moist and delicious. I have a tub here and a heavy duty plastic bag and I placed my bird in it. You can prepare a brine separately and add it to the bird, but I'm just going to add everything right into the bag. I'm going to throw in some lemon slices for freshness half a cup of sugar followed by half a cup of salt and I'm going to top this with 4 liters of room temperature water. Once the bird is covered I'm going to tie the bag tightly and I'm going to stick this in my fridge for 24 hours for best results. The bird is now brined and I'm going to drain all of the brine away and I'm going to leave the bird cavity side down again. I'm going to make sure that this bird is nice and dry by patting it with dry towels so it roasts in the oven and doesn't create any steam. For practicality and quicker cook time, I'm going to be spatchcocking this turkey. This means I'm going to cut out the spine so I can lay the bird down flat when I'm cooking it. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this plastic contraption that holds the legs together. Please note that if you're not spatchcocking the turkey, you can leave this intact as it's oven grade plastic and it will hold the legs together. I'm going to very carefully cut alongside the spine on one side and then I'm going to turn it around and cut the other side. Please note that this is a heavy duty meat scissors. A regular kitchen shears will not work but you could use a sharp knife. Next I'm going to start snipping alongside the other side of the spine. I'm going to cut through the middle and flip the bird around to cut the other side. I'm going to keep this spine aside with the other bits and pieces as it'll make a great stock later. Now I'm going to lay the turkey down and I'm going to press down on the breast to flatten it. To moisten the bird underside the skin, I'm just going to combine one tablespoon of room temperature butter with one tablespoon of olive oil. I'm going to add some salt and pepper to taste. One teaspoon of fresh oregano and one teaspoon of chili flakes. I'm going to mix this together. Now I'm going to transfer my bird to my roasting pan. This is a special roasting pan for turkeys 
and I'm going to add some lemon slices and some oregano at the bottom for flavor. I'm going to place my bird skin side up into the tray. Using my fingers, I'm going to gently go under the skin and I'm going to try and pull it back. Now I'm going to try and get black flavored butter under the skin. I'm going to make this most amazing red pepper and feta blend that will work as a marinade as well as a sauce and it's even great as a dip. In my food processor, I'm going to add two bottled red peppers. This was 340 ml. I'm going to add salt to taste and five cloves of garlic. Next, I'm going to add a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil as well as one cup of feta cheese. I'm going to follow this with a half cup of yogurt and for some heat, I'm going to add one tablespoon of chili flakes. I have some fresh oregano here and I'm going to add one tablespoon of the leaves. Put the lid on and process this. This red pepper feta sauce is smooth and delicious. You can store this bottled in your fridge and it'll keep for at least two weeks. I'm using some of this as the marinade on the turkey and the rest will be served as a dip later. I'm going to spoon some of that red pepper and feta blend over the bird and I'm going to brush it everywhere. Just leave this aside to marinate for an hour or two. Typically, I also like to add the neck, etc. But since this bird has been spatchcocked and it has spread out, there's not a lot of room in this pan, so I'm going to save those bits and pieces for a soup later. While this marinates, I'm going to work on the potatoes. The starchier the potatoes, the better. I have one pound of Yukon Gold potatoes here, and I've already peeled them and I set them in water so they don't brown. Now I'm quickly going to cut these into wedges. Depending on the size of the potato, I will divide it accordingly. I'm adding these to my roasting tray. It's important that you have a nice heavy duty tray for this process as this can sit in the oven for over an hour. Now that the potatoes are all cut into wedges, I'm going to add a quarter cup of olive oil, the juice of half a lemon. My lemons are rather large. This is about 50 ml. I'm also going to add three teaspoons of fresh crushed garlic, salt and pepper to taste. One tablespoon of oregano. I'm also going to pour over three fourths of a cup of chicken or veggie stock. I'm going to allow these potatoes to cook in my preheated oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I'm just going to turn them over and I'm going to cook them for another 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, the potatoes are cooked, but they're a long way from getting brown and crispy. So we now need to remove most of the liquid and keep it aside. Return the potatoes to the oven and now I'm going to cook them for another 30 to 40 minutes. I'm going to flip them at intervals. Add some oil to the liquid if you feel you need a bit more moisture. A word of warning, these potatoes go really quickly, so you may want to double or triple this recipe. My oven is preheated for 350 degrees and I'm going to add my turkey in. This will cook for about two hours and a bit in total. Once my turkey has a light browning, I will add another layer of the marinade. I'm now going to cover and cook this. This will ensure that the flavor is locked in. This is looking great and we're building some really tasty gravy. Add a bit more marinade and baste in between. And then I'm just going to allow it to roast a little bit longer. Typically a turkey takes about 20 minutes per pound and a bit longer if it's stuffed. 
Because my bird was spatchcocked, it was cooked in 2 hours and 15 minutes. Allow the turkey to rest before serving with the lemon potatoes. You can also add the extra marinade from cooking the potatoes over the spuds as well as the turkey. Serve it with the red pepper and feta dip, pita bread and Greek salad. Enjoy! Thank you so much for joining me on Craving Food Adventures. Even if we can't celebrate in a large group, this turkey is really going to make you feel thankful for whatever goodness we received this year. If you love this video guys, give it a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends and don't forget leave me a comment so I know what you think about the video. Also, be sure to follow me behind the scenes on all of my social channels. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest and Twitter. And from our family to yours, happy Thanksgiving. Bye.